You must excuse me. I've grown quite where I... This hasn't been easy, I know. But you've learned a lesson. A lesson in honesty. Honesty to yourself and honesty to others. That lesson will stand you in good stead all your life. I, I think we've all learned a good lesson. I've always heard that honesty is the best policy. Now I'm catching on to why that's so, and why that's so, and why that's so, and why that's so. Welcome, dear listener, to Tales from Astlantis. Join us each week as we cast a critical eye on Mesoamerican pseudo history, New Age nonsense, archaeological misconceptions, and more. We are your hosts, Curly Tlapoyawa and Ruben Arellano, also known as Tlacateca. We're going to take this opportunity to say Tlascamati. Thank you for joining us and give you an idea of what you can expect from this show. Allow me to introduce my co-host, Dr. Ruben Arellano Tlacatecat. Ruben Arellano Tlacatecat is a scholar, activist, and professor of history. His research explores Chicana Chicano indigeneity, Mexican indigenous nationalism, and Coahuiltecan identity resurgence. Other areas of research include Aztlan, the U.S. Southwest, Anahuac, Mesoamerica, and Native North America. He has presented and published widely on these topics and has taught courses at various institutions. He currently teaches history at Dallas College, Mountain View Campus. Thank you, Curly. Now let me introduce you. My co-host is Curly Tlapoyawa. He is an archaeologist, ethno-historian, and filmmaker. His research covers Mesoamerica, the American Southwest, and the historical connections between the two regions. He is the author of numerous books and has presented lectures at the University of New Mexico, Yale University, San Diego State University, and numerous others. He is currently a professor of Chicano Studies at the Colegio Chicano del Pueblo, a free online educational institution. So, just so our listeners know, uh, Ruben and I have known each other for many years, and we've remained good friends through all of those years. <laughs> Supposedly. <laughs> and the, re- uh, the reason we're doing this podcast is these topics uh, have great interest to both of us. These are things that we've experienced, that we've lived through. We've, we both came up through the Mexicayot as danzantes aztecas. We've gone to medicine meetings together and other ceremonies. So we have a wealth of experience on these topics. Now, we both also have careers as educators and researchers. And part of this has been sort of deconstructing and dissecting these things that we were taught and sort of exploring what we found to be factual, what we found to be exaggerations, and what we found to be completely made up. I think we even started questioning these things around the same time. We did. I think... When I first met you, it must have been sometime around the year 2000, maybe late 99 or 2000. It's been at least a good 20 years since we've known each other. And uh, that was back when you still lived in North Texas. Uh, I'm in Dallas and you are in... Uh, Right now I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I remember like after you moved away from North Texas, you um, we kept in touch. And I think uh, I used to... Uh, visit you uh, maybe not every year but I would try to go out there in the summer and and visit for a day or two and we would hang out and so we maintained that connection and we we kept in touch over the years through social media and uh, I think around the time that I started questioning Mexicayo uh, and a lot of the things that we had come to believe were were true because we were told that these were ancient things that had been passed down to us through generations and uh, elders, etc., was probably around the year 2006, seven, something like that. That's when I started going to um, community college. You know, that set me on this long road that um, ended up with my um, uh, attaining a PhD in history. Uh, and so, uh, I think on on your side of things, you were questioning certain things, and I was questioning. Um, certain things and we, we would get together back in the old uh, Mexica Eagle Society message board remember that? Oh yeah. Um, and those of you that remember those days well, I remember having very uh, 
lively conversations on that board to say the least and we would discuss various things and we would try to track down the origin of, of for example the word ishachilan i think that's one of the triggers for me that really got me going like okay so i've looked at all these nahuatl dictionaries and i've looked at a lot of sources uh, from the colonial period and the word ishachilan or its variants ishachilatlan or ixachilan or what you know it doesn't exist where i mean where is the source for this so that's one of the things that that started me on this path to questioning a lot of the stuff that we're going to be covering on this show yeah and and speaking of ishachilan i remember picking up the book um being indian in wayapan and that is one of the first places where i encountered the character of juan luna cardenas who turns out had a uh, a hand in the invention and spreading of that word ishachilan so we're going to be talking about him we're going to be talking about these sorts of topics in the weeks to come sort of peeling back the layers of the onion and just casting that critical lens on what we've been taught to accept as traditional knowledge. Uh, sometimes it turns out to be, and you know, there's truth to it, or sometimes it's completely made up, and usually it's a mix of the two. So if you are interested in Maya gods that never existed, whether the Aztecs taught the Egyptians how to build pyramids, how neo-Aztec nationalist movements helped inform Chicano identity, and what 19th century occultists have to do with early Maya archaeology, then please subscribe to Tales from Aztlantis. We look forward to going on this journey with you all. And remember, the truth is like medicine. It doesn't always taste good, but it's always good for you. Timoitase.